Hi there, I'm Dr. Stephen Fallon. Welcome to this clinical video. What I'd like to do is, um, my thought was, I'd like to uh, shoot a couple of clinical videos where I share with you some different, you know, products and different little tips and techniques that I use in my practice. And so this will be a short video and um, uh, I'm going to do a series of these over the next six to eight months. And this particular video, I wanna share with you a little tool that I use in the practice, especially with veneer and uh, jacket crown cases. Veneer cases specifically are uh, more, uh, more, uh, more frequently. And uh, it's just a little box we use called the Resin Keeper. And I've talked about this before, but I thought I'd share and show you what it looks like. It's like this little box that I uh, bought from uh, Cosmodent in the United States and it has little wells in it where I can put the actual restorations and uh, so typically when we're inserting a case of veneers I might insert two to four restorations at a time so I'll get them prepared put them in the box uh, silenate the porcelain uh, place the uh, resin cement in the porcelain and then cover it and it's ready to go well I then go work on the patient etch the patient, put the adhesive on, and uh, then transfer the restorations from my resin keeper to the patient's mouth. And as I'm transferring each particular restoration, I can put the lid on the box so the other ones don't get uh, any kind of light hitting them. And it's just a really great tool to use. So here's some pictures of this. The other thing that we do is, uh, as you can see in these clinical photos, we actually uh, highlight, uh, you know, name which restorations which, and you know, you can see I've named the four lower incisors here and uh, placed the four lower incisors in the uh, resin keeper. I then, as I said, add the silane, get the surface ready and uh, place the resin cement, cover it with the lid and it's ready to go. And this is a particular case that I inserted a couple of weeks ago. It's the second half of a full mouth rehabilitation. Basically, I had inserted the upper arch, um, I guess it was a couple of months ago. So I inserted the upper arch a few months ago. I then uh, had the patient test out using the new upper porcelain restorations to the lower plastic restorations uh, because we did some occlusal changes. And uh, once, you know, a few weeks went by, I had him come back into the practice. He said everything felt great. So we removed the posterior molar provisional restorations and took a new CR bite record. So we took the new CR bite record. I actually did two, step, two sets of these. I sent them to my ceramist, Harold Heindel. He mounted the lower prep model to the upper final uh, porcelain model, which we took another, uh, you know, uh, per, uh, permadine impression of. Uh, you could use polyether or polyvinyl siloxane, but we took basically an accurate impression of this. He uh, trimmed the bites. <laughs> Tried the case on, uh, basically the, uh, the models, and uh, confirmed that both bites were identical. And I'll shoot a video talking about this too, I think, because it's an interesting technique. We use a device called the MPI to verify that the bites are identical. And uh, so that'll be a video that I'll shoot in the next month or so and share with you. It's basically part of the training from my occlusion design course. Um, and then he sent me back the uh, lower porcelain restorations. So here are the lower restorations. We had uh, anterior feldspathic layered ceramic restorations. So they were uh, veneers on the lower incisors and cuspids and uh, veneers on the bicuspids, except for one of the bicuspids. And then we had the four molars and one bicuspid as Emax monolithic crowns that were stained. Um, we can use, you know, a number of different materials. You know, I use zirconia and lava, lava plus. But for this particular case, we decided to go with the Emax. And on molars, I like the monolithic Emax. I've never had any trouble, knock on wood, with those restorations. Nothing's chipped. It's uh, been fairly, uh, fairly predictable in my practice. And so here's the case, uh, just to show you this particular case. I'll just share with you the lower incisors because that's what we're talking about today. Uh, but we did complete a full mouth rehabilitation for this patient. And I know those of you thinking, oh, this is a good ortho case. You know, the patient was in his 50s, late 50s, did not want to do ortho. It was totally off the cards. I did present that as one of the treatment plans. Orthodontics was one of the options for treatment for this particular case. But, you know, he wanted a small makeover and improve the health of his teeth that have been uh, worn out over the years with attrition, erosion, and multiple restorations. So there's before, 
Uh, we obviously completed a wax up. The diagnostic wax up guided the uh, preparations of the teeth in this particular manner that I've prepared them for the veneers. You can see the substructure is very dark. This is not dentin, this is enamel. I prepare my cases with literally 80 to 90% enamel remaining. That's the way we like to prepare the cases. So there's pretty much almost all enamel, except for in some of the receded gingival areas where we didn't really prep into, um, where there's dentin or cementum. But you can see here, those are the preparation designs based on the diagnostic wax up. And we could do another video talking about that, although I've talked about this on the webinars pretty extensively. And then here are the provisionals. These are the provisionals after three months in the mouth. These are uh, veneer provisionals with molar crown provisionals and one bicuspid crown provisional. And uh, those have been in the mouth about three months. We have great gingival health. And uh, the tissue was very healthy, actually, when I removed the provisionals. The prep photo was actually the day of seeding when I removed the provisionals. So you can see the tissue looks pretty darn healthy for having provisional restorations in his mouth for three months. Tissue's pretty good and he wasn't able to floss or he didn't floss. You know, you could floss with floss threaders, but I, I'll tell you that he didn't. Um, so again, provisional restorations. Here are the final porcelain restorations. These are layered ceramics. So all the effects are layered from the inside out. It's not stained. The monolithic Emax is stained, but in the front, in the anterior, in the aesthetic zone, I want the effects layered from the inside out so that we get great aesthetics. And then here are the restorations in the mouth. I actually shot this photograph this morning. It came in for his post-op, everything was good. I adjusted one molar restoration, a little bit of an incline on one of the second molars, uh, four seven, lower right second molar. Other than that, didn't adjust anything. Uh, it was a pretty easy insert and pretty easy follow-up. Uh, but these are the restorations. You can see the tissue health is really good. Uh, restorations are very lifelike and aesthetic. They're not like monochromatic white restorations. They look like teeth. And some other views. This is before. Again, good ortho case. Really quite a good ortho case. If he had uh, opted for ortho or Invisalign, we could have set up the case a little easier. But um, I'll tell you that I didn't have to over-prepare the teeth to achieve a good result. And here are the preparations. Again, it's all a three-dimensional thinking of where the teeth need to be prepared. And um, we'll actually share with uh, all of you in my occlusion design course, I share with you how I figure out preparing teeth where there's some crowding. And I'll share this in my aesthetic design webinar uh, number three, webinar number three in the aesthetic design course. Uh, and then here are the final restorations. Uh, that angle is actually the day of seeding. You can see there's a little redness from uh, removing all the excess resin cement. So we've got one that wraps down the palatal, down the palatal, the one lateral uh, central incisor wraps down the palatal to try and create an even incisal edge. They look even from the frontal view, from the occlusal view. There's just a little wrapping overlapping on the lingual or palatal, lingual really on the lower uh, that shows um, how we evened out the arch form. So we were able to even out the arch form without aggressively or over preparing the uh, teeth and not even breaking contact. Didn't break contact on any of these. I typically don't with veneer restorations because I'm trying to save and preserve as much tooth structure as possible. From the frontal view, these look nice and level and even now compared to what they were when we started. And uh, that's basically it. That's basically uh, the case. Here is uh, another view, just kind of a, a slightly open view. And here's a view where I have the before and after frontal views. So you can see the before picture, the after picture. You can see how much improvement we've had with the, um, with the actual uh, final result. It's, it looks so much better. And he had a lot of kind of wear and crowding that if we did do orthodontics and leveled these teeth, they never would have looked as nice as this. Uh, the after view, we probably still would have had to do veneers or bonding to level out the incisal edges because he's had wear from a crowded position. So the, you know, you level them out, but they still don't look right. So thank you for joining me for this quick clinical technique video. Uh, if you're not on my email list and you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook or somewhere else, go to failindentalseminars.com, enter your name and email address, and we will uh, send you these videos as I create them. So thanks again for joining us today, and we'll talk to you soon.